Hello again everybody, welcome back to the Brew Shed. Today's video is going to be a little bit of a project build tutorial based around um, creating a new mash tun out of some old uh, FV buckets. Um, I've got three of those that I'm going to be using. Uh, the reason that I'm wanting to recycle them is because they're looking a little bit scratched up and battered at the moment and uh, it's getting to the point where I'm starting to become a little bit wary of them uh, being able to sanitise them properly. So. I was either going to replace them um, and just throw the old ones away uh, or do this. So I thought it would be better to try and recycle them and um, build a new mash tun of a slightly different sort of design uh, compared to the existing uh, cool box and copper manifold uh, one that I've got. This one is based on a fairly well known instructable uh, tutorial which is online uh, and I know people who have built this and recommend it quite highly. My version is going to be a little bit different. The original only uses two buckets. Um, I'm going to use three and um, change the uh, way that the water is drained out of the mash tun slightly. Um, I'll explain that as we go through as to what I'm doing, but uh, it will be a little bit different to that instructable design, but essentially it's um, along the same lines. So. Um, yeah, so let's get on with it and um, see what we're going to be doing. Okay, so step one, pour yourself a beer. Very important that we don't start work before providing adequate refreshment. This is a um, amber lager based on Samuel Adams' um, Boston lager recipe. Came out quite nice if I do say so myself. So. Uh, yeah, that's what we'll be drinking as we go through this. Right, so this is what I'm going to be using. I've got three old buckets. This one was actually originally used as a kettle. Um, so it's got a few holes in it for taps and elements. And that's going to be the outermost uh, bucket on the mash tun. And then a couple of the 30 odd litre I think, um, yeah, 28 or 30 litre FV buckets um, which I will also be using and then we've got some gaffer tape, a drill, expanding foam, a few brass fittings uh, and washers, so we've got a tank connector, 90 degree elbow, a hex uh, nipple joint there and then a big roll of thermal wrap um, so that's basically insulation that I got from screw fix not going to be needing all of that uh, but any leftovers I'm going to be using to add extra insulation to the shed anyway so no great uh, loss if there's any left over um, right so that's all the bits that I have for now um, I will also be using a ball valve tap but uh, they didn't have that in stock at Screwfix. I'll be going back to get that tomorrow. So this is what we'll be getting on with. Um, and I'll just take you through step by step what I'm doing. Right, so I've just basically cut off the uh, rim and handles from this bucket. As you can see, a fucking awful job of it. Um, that was just me hacking away with a standing knife. But that won't matter because it's all gonna be hidden under insulation anyway, so. Um, that's just gonna make it easy to get a easier to get a nice um, even wrap around the outside of the tun. So let me just explain how this is supposed to be working. This will be the bottom part of the mash tun, and then this second bucket is going to slot into that. I have drilled a 20 millimeter hole into the base of this, and fitted the tank connector and then the 90 degree elbow at the bottom there so with the design on the instructables um, website the second fv had a sort of pickup tube um, type siphon arrangement going on this one is going to be more um, working on a sort of bottom draining um, principle so hopefully with a little bit of a tilt towards the end of um, the mash this should yield virtually no 
dead space at all. Um, that's the idea anyway. And it also just means I need to use less pipe work um, to actually get the wort out of the tun. So I've dropped the FE with the bottom drain on it into the bucket that I cut the um, handles off of and rim and then there was an existing hole there which it has actually lined up with pretty well already um, on the bottom there or obviously if you didn't have a tap hole already drilled just drill one at the point where the elbow meets the side of the bottom bucket uh, yeah so and there's the hex nipple now fitted onto the elbow joint through the other bucket. Um, there's a few wraps of PTFE tape on um, the threads on those just to help seal the joint so we'll obviously test that for leaks before I start adding insulation on the outside but it should be okay uh, and yeah that's matched up nice and easily to where the existing tap hole was on the bucket. So the ball valve tap is fitted onto the um, bucket now and I've just, before I do anything else, filled it up with water and performing a quick leak test to check that everything is sound and that there's not any leaks in there. So luckily I can sort of look into the underneath through these holes that are already drilled and see if there's any water coming out, which there isn't at the moment. But I'll leave that for a little while just to make sure. Right, so it's passed the leak test. There were no issues there with any of the joins. I'm now going to be filling in the void um, underneath that first bucket with some expanding foam so that's going to give a really good insulated base um, to the mash tun and hopefully stop it losing any real heat through the um, bottom of the tun. So what have we learnt here? Expanding foam expands quite a lot. I've clearly put far too much in the base of this bucket and it is now attempting to take over the shed like some sort of 50s B -mo movie alien life form. Yeah so I'm basically going to spend the next five minutes trying to mop this shit up as it pours out of the, um, the hole in the bucket. Wish me luck! So I gave up fighting the blob and have decided to let it do its own thing and I'll just hack that off once it's dried out because it's a lot easier than trying to scoop the shit up and throw it in the bin as I'm now covered in the stuff. Anyway, lesson learned there, so moving on. Okay, so I've tidied that up now. After um, it actually sets, it wasn't too bad to peel it off the side of the bucket and um, scrape it off the bench. Still a little bit there to tidy up, but I'll sand that off later. Um, it has filled the bottom of the bucket in completely. Um, if I was going to do that again, I'd probably put some water in it while I was filling it because it has domed the um, bottom of the bucket out slightly, so uh, it is slightly unstable, but should be okay once it's got a bit of weight on it to push the base down. Um, so not a total disaster, even though it looked like one there at first. So the next step is getting your um, third bucket and turning it into the false bottom that's going to sit inside the other two um, buckets that we've already prepared. So as you can see, I've basically just attacked it with a drill and turned the base of it into a um, straining sort of colander type arrangement. Um, three millimeter holes uh, just drilled straight through. I was going to try and follow a smart um, Fibonacci sequence pattern as advised by somebody else but uh, in the end I couldn't be fucked with that so I just attacked it with the drill but I think it looks fairly neat considering I didn't mark out any of the holes and just did that all by eye so I'm reasonably pleased with that. Right so I've now put on the insulation on the outside of the tun that's three layers of the foil um, bubble wrap stuff uh, little cutouts for the handles so that you can still lift it up by this and uh, just sealed it off at the top and the bottom with gaffer tape. It's a bit of a faff getting it to um, 
go around the bucket nicely because of the taper on the bucket so you have to um, kind of pleat it or pull it in at the bottom and cut off the excess and then tape it back up uh, but I think that's looking reasonably neat so I'm quite happy with that it's reasonably tight on the outside so um, that should work quite well fingers crossed right so I've now put the um, third bucket inside the ton and I've begun lining the rim of that bucket just using the off cuts from the main strips of insulation that I used on the, the base there so I'm just going to use the off cuts to line the top of that um, a razor blade or scalpel is really handy just for trimming off the edges to get it nice and neat but I want it to be um, as flush as possible to the insulation on the lower part of the bucket um, so that we're not going to be losing any heat out there through that top part and then we'll look at the lid right as you can see that's all insulated now around the rim of the top bucket um, so that meets up quite nicely with the insulation on the bottom half and should keep that nice and snug it does mean though that the lid doesn't really um, click into place anymore so in order to get a nice seal on the lid and also insulate it properly uh, I'm going to do a sort of a, a plug with some polystyrene um, stuck onto the bottom of that lid and then some more insulation layers over the top of it. So that's the polystyrene plug cut out of some sheet um, to fit the base of the lid. Uh, I'll wrap that in some silver foil and then a bit of cling film as well and tack it onto the bottom of the, uh, the lid. So here's the finished lid. A um, couple of layers of the insulating foil bubble wrap stuff on the top and then the foam, uh, sorry, polystyrene plug underneath the lid and as you can see that fits in quite snugly and seals quite nicely to the top of the mash tun. So that is the finished product. It's a bit heavy on the gaffer tape but other than that I think that looks pretty decent considering. Um, so I'm going to do a quick test of it with some hot water um, I know that won't necessarily be representative of how it will perform when it's got a proper mash in it but it will give me some idea of um, heat retention which will hopefully be quite good so yeah oh and I need to get a hose tail to put onto the tap but other than that it's it's all done okay okay so I decided not to bother doing just a plain water test so this is um, the first mash in this new ton um, just mashed in now hit 66.9 degrees C so I'm going to seal that up for an hour um, and then check how well it's managed to maintain that temperature uh, yeah just jumped up to 67 nope it's back to 66.9 so better pop the lid on quickly and then I'm going to leave that um, I would normally stir um, a couple of times during the mash but I'll leave it alone this time just to see um, how it does without any interference okay okay so the hour is up time for the moment of truth let's get in there and see what temperature we've managed to maintain Looking pretty good. So that is 0.4 of a degree, 0.5 of a degree over the course of one hour. And considering that that's not a full sized uh, mash in there, so it's actually only a 15 litre batch that I'm doing, that's pretty impressive. Okay. So a quick update on how the rest of that brew day uh, and mash actually went using the new ton. I did have some problems. Um, it basically got pretty badly stuck in the middle of the batch sparging step. 
the holes that I drilled into the bottom seemed to basically get plugged with uh, all the bits of grain. I was putting a wheat beer on with it and uh, I thought that I would you know, test out how it worked with a potentially tricky mash and it didn't work very well. So basically the problem was that the, the holes were getting, um, seemed to be the perfect size just to get blocked by little bits of grain. I think that was partly my fault for accidentally um, double crushing um, the wheat that was in that recipe. I was using a mixture of whole grain and crushed grain and I weighed it all out together and then had to put it all through the grain mill again. So the wheat malt probably got crushed far too fine and uh, ended up the perfect size to block the holes up in the ton. Um, heat, uh, heat wise it maintained the heat really well as you saw before so um, I'm not too upset about it because I've come up with a plan to fix that and that's basically um, I've attacked it with the Dremel tool and hopefully you can see that it's now got slots in the base rather than holes so that should um, hopefully make it drain through a lot easier uh, and I read, a, I read something somewhere saying that slotted um, false bottoms are much uh, less likely to get stuck than the ones with just holes in them. So hopefully that will help. But uh, I will test it out again because I think it will work properly once I've sorted that out. Um, and it should actually be quite good. But uh, the first run was basically a bit of a disaster. So I'll update uh, on this once I've actually got another brew on with it and see how it goes then. Um, otherwise, in terms of uh, the design generally and how it works, I think it should work pretty well. Um, I'm thinking potentially of actually swapping out uh, if this uh, doesn't work with the bucket in a bucket sort of thing, swapping out that for just some um, stainless steel hose braid in the bottom because I could quite easily fix some of that into the um, drain at the bottom and just have a, a loop of that around the base of the tunnel and that might actually work better than um, using it this way because you won't have a big void underneath the um, false bottom which also caused some issues in terms of letting a lot of uh, grain particles settle underneath and then they got drained through right at the end so a uh, couple of yeah little things there but I'll see how it works with the changes that I've made and then um, think about whether I'll keep it that way or not so we shall see all right, uh, yeah, anyway, cheers for that, and hopefully you enjoyed watching that little project build. Um, not at the point yet where I'd recommend for people to go and have a go at that themselves. I'd wait and see if uh, I'd get this working properly, but um, I'm sure lots of other people have built this and managed to get it uh, working quite well, so uh, fingers crossed. All right, cheers, guys. See you later.